we get the expectations and the relationship right, and then we have agreement on price, then, then we'll talk marketing. But marketing's not going to fix a bad price, is it? No, no matter how much marketing I do on a, on a house that's 40 grand over price that really needs to be a short sale, I can kill myself spending money on it and it ain't going to sell. So we have to kind of keep that mentality. Okay? So now back to the slides, right? Okay. So two appointments on the first one, right? First appointment, 10 or 15 minutes. Would it be a good time for me to come out and take a quick tour of your house? And it's literally 10 or 15. Great. Now if I could just go ahead and set a time to go over the marketing analysis and complete the listing, when would you like to do that? And set that appointment at the same time. Okay? Set two, try, just try it. Try to set two appointments at the same time. If you use this methodology, you can set the second appointment in the office if you choose to. They'll come to the office. You've already seen their house. You don't really need to go out there again unless you have the listing, right? But it's that time frame that I use to decide whether they're calling me to list their house or they're calling me to sell their house, okay? Between, between the first appointment and the second appointment, that's where I really get a feel. Not only the first appointment is to detail the house out, and, but it really, it really tells me whether or not they're actually calling me to list their house or actually calling me to sell their house. And that, and that's sort of like, that gives me feedback to where when I go back on the second appointment, how do I approach the scenario? So your first appointment's how long? Uh, 15, not even 15 minutes. Oh, okay. So about, about the same time frame, right? And, 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 they, and as, they, as you go through the house, they'll play their hand out to you to a degree, won't they? Mm -hmm. If you'll just slow down, right, and, and take notes, okay? Take notes on what they say. Take this sheet with you when you go, okay? So when you go to the front door, you get to the front door of the house, you have this sheet that you've already filled out kind of on the phone, right? And some of the, you know, some of the questions are, do you have a price in mind? And what would that be if you have one? Some people are so afraid to ask that question. There's only like three possible answers. I have no idea. Yes, I have a price in mind, but I'm not going to tell you. Or I think it's worth about this. And, and you can operate with, that's only three answers there are, right? You can operate with any of those. Are you going to be any, interviewing any other realtors? And if you are, whom? And if you play this game enough, you focus in on the listing side enough, you will start to, under, you will start to figure out what other people's listing presentations are. And you will start to find the soft underbelly in their presentations. And you expose the soft underbelly of people's presentations. Most of you, if, they, if you are competing, it's going to be you and a name. A name realtor, right? And if you... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Are they always willing to answer that question? Which one? Who the other realtor is? No, I don't... Not always. Not always. <laughs> Not always. But that's okay. That's okay. I mean, but think, see, I, I'm, I like, I like dig into all this stuff, right? If I ask you that question, what are your possible answers? I'm going to interview people, but I'm not going to tell you who they are? Okay. Most people, uh, Joe, do you, I don't know if you, you ask that question, are you going to be interviewing people? Sure. And do they answer it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they, they tell me right away. And I said, that's fine. I said, I, I kind of invite you to go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. I said, I said, you know, after you interview them, I said, then I want you to call me back. And I said, let's get this thing going. Yeah. Um, and it happened this past week with a house out in which some of the states. They interviewed two other realtors. And then he called me and said, Joe, you got it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah I get them all the time. Last week I went out on one, too. He, and the guy's a friend of mine. And, and I went out there and, and I said, look, Bruce, I said, you know, this foreign blue tile you got on the kitchen floor is not going to sell. You know, you need to do something with it. Well, he's interviewing another realtor. I knew who she was, and I said, that's fine. Well, she got the listing, 10000 over my value, and he still has four-inch blue tile on the, on the kitchen floor, and she listed it until August. Well, he's got to keep her until August. You know, you know, eventually sometime he might come around, you know, and say, Joe, you were right, but I'm not spending my advertising dollars or wasting my time or on my reputation on something that's not sellable. So, you know, this Park Shown girl yeah. just got her hands full. Uh, yeah. No, I, I think I think this is a huge question and a lot of people honestly are afraid to ask it. 
Because their, their, their theory is, I've had people say this to me, I would never ask people if they're going to interview somebody else. I'm like, why not? Well, because what if they weren't going to? I don't want to tell. I don't want to introduce the idea that they should. Right. Yeah. Well, no, I wanted to. Abs- I ended. I did radio show for 13 years. I was like you, Joe. Every radio show, I always ended it with, as always, I don't ask that I'm the only realtor that you call. I just ask that you give me a shot. You do need to interview realtors. Thank you very much. And my my idea was, if I told you that on the radio, you'd never interview people. Right? Well, it was, I was totally wrong on that one because every time I'd go in, how'd you get my name? Oh, listen to you on the radio. Oh, you're going to be interviewing people? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you told us to. We're going to interview three, just like you always say. And I would say, that's awesome. Who are you going to interview? And many times, they would be able to answer a name. And then Carol Jones was a, an iconic person in Springfield, Missouri. She had a huge company. And, and sometimes they would say, well, Carol Jones. I'm like, you're going to have Carol herself come out? No, no, no. I just mean their company. Oh, awesome. Bunch of great agents. What agent are you going to use? Uh, and right then I knew I'm in. Because you're going to call Carol Jones. You're going to get floor duty. You're going to think their agents are interchangeable pieces. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Sometimes it was Patrick Murney, number one agent in town. Okay, I'm good. It was Ethel Kerbo, number one Cobalt Banker agent in the state of Missouri. I'm good. I knew their presentation. I knew that Patrick Murney was going to tell you there was no reason to get feedback until somebody had been through your house twice. That was because he didn't want to mess with it. I had a dialogue that blew a hole in that. That really the key was after the first time, because after the first time they've been through, we want to immediately know what the issues are because maybe we can fix that to make sure we get a second showing. Right? I mean, this is like guerrilla warfare when you compete. Okay, I mean it really is. Okay, so set two appointments, go out to their house, quick deal. Um, 